Compared with other animals, humans are pretty strange. We chill out in space, drive cars between the cities we've built, spend all day on the phone, make and watch videos, and other odd things. And we now also have the frightening capacity to destroy our planet in many ways. On a personal level, we walk on two legs, have no fur but wear clothes, can do amazing things with our hands, talk, read and write, live in huge groups, and educate and look after our kids for years. It's no real surprise then that superstitious people through the ages thought that human beings had been created by gods, or even aliens. In fact, some still do. So in a few videos, we're going to look to see how human beings developed and ended up taking over the planet. In this one, we shall see how human beings lost their fur and started to wear clothes and check out the mystery of the lost baculum. What's a baculum? Well, that's a surprise. A physiological change which separates humans from most other mammals is our loss of body hair. This might be linked to when humans started wearing clothing and maybe when skin color started to change. Actually, this hairless idea is just plain wrong. We have as many hairs on our bodies as our chimpanzee and gorilla cousins. It's just ours have become much smaller and finer. You can see this when you get goosebumps. But some people are just hairier than others. Why humans lost their fur is still obscure. It could have been as a need to get rid of parasites which cause diseases. Or it could have been the need to lose heat, especially when hunting on open ground in the sun. Or maybe less hair became a feature of sexual attractiveness, in which case is that why women have finer body hair than men? The reasons aren't clear, however we can take a stab at when it might have happened by looking at skin colour. Humans nearest genetic cousin chimpanzees have pale skin under their fur and are born with pale hairless faces which darken as they get older to protect the skin from the sun. It's likely the same was true of early humans but when they began to lose the fur on their bodies this darkening spread all over. Genetic analysis suggests that the gene responsible for this, called MC1R, was finally stable in the early human population in Africa about 1.2 million years ago, which indicates that that was roughly when all humans had acquired dark skin and therefore presumably had adapted to their loss of hair. But why did we retain pubic and underarm hair? Well, one explanation is that the hairs in these humid regions might keep important sexually attractive chemicals called pheromones active. But since no human pheromones have actually been clearly identified, it's not much of a theory. Or there may be classed as secondary sex characteristics which help with sexual attraction and reproduction. Although quite how hairy armpits are supposed to help us choose a mate is anyone's guess. OK, so when did humans start wearing clothes? You might assume, given how cold it can get, it might be shortly after humans lost their fur, but you could be wrong. Human beings are the unhappy hosts of three types of unwanted guests, head, pubic and body lice. Lice generally cling to hair, but without any body hair to cling to, human body lice have adapted to life in human clothing. DNA testing shows that human body lice cannot have existed much earlier than about 100,000 years ago. And that presumably was when humans started wearing clothes. And that's over a million years without any clothes on. It's a neat theory and works well with modern human beings who left Africa for the cold north about that time. But not so well for hairless Homo erectus, who had already lived in Ice Age Europe and Asia for a million years battling against the elements. Perhaps they were tougher than us, or perhaps they did have clothes but no lice. No one knows. And what about pale skin? Again, it is thought to have originated when modern humans left Africa through a variation of that same MC1R gene, which allowed greater production of vitamin D by the skin in parts of the world without so much sunshine. And as an interesting byproduct, that is when red hair first appeared as well. But if that happened to modern humans, what about a pale-skinned, blonde, clothes-wearing Homo erectus living in Ice Age Europe half a million years ago? 
an interesting idea, but definitely still in the science fiction section at present. Perhaps they regrew their fur like mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses. Okay, so we know a little bit more about humans becoming hairless, but what about the missing baculum? So first of all, what is it? The baculum is a bone found in the penis of most male placental mammals. In most cases, on a sexual arousal, the baculum is pushed out from the abdomen to stiffen the penis and mating can commence. And the mystery is, whilst it is present in other primates such as gorillas and chimpanzees, why don't human males have one? Some male mammals have a lot of mating to do, either often or over long periods. A male lion, for instance, may mate 250 times over four days. Other mammals may mate for hours at a time. In both situations, a bone to stiffen the penis is really handy when a male's resolve may start to weaken. And spare a thought for a female walrus. Her male partner's baculum is nearly 24 inches long. Female elephants, however, may be relieved that their partners don't have one at all. Okay, we get the point. So back to the mystery, where did the human baculum go? As we said, both chimpanzee and gorilla males do have a baculum, but they're quite small, just a few centimetres long. One characteristic of all the great apes is that they can all walk on two legs with varying degrees of success, and it may be the physiological changes to the back and pelvis which have affected the baculum. A human male's pelvis is quite a cramped affair, and there may be little room for a baculum in the remaining space. But it's also likely the convoluted tale of human reproduction has had a large effect. For a human male to know he has fathered a child, he needs to devote many months of attention to a female if only to make sure another male doesn't usurp his place. These days we call it marriage. The length of human childhood means females generally need long-term support from a male. Well, that's marriage again. And unlike chimpanzees, human females do not show signs of ovulation, which means males have to keep mating to ensure conception. In fact, humans mate on average an amazing thousand times between babies, and gorillas only do it 10 to 15 times. So approaching a sophisticated human female with something as crude as a baculum for a few minutes a year is just not going to work. To summarise then, since the human male does not need to be quick on the draw, and can look forward to his mate wanting to keep him around to look after the children for a while, he can dispense with the services of his baculum, which might also help with his walking as well.